All right, guys, we got our cutting board blank made. Now it's time to clean this guy up, get it all polished and looking smooth. So let's get started. All right, so we got it all surfaced and uh, it's ready to be sanded, except there are a few little uh, holes where the resin couldn't get to. Uh, this was actually underneath the wood, so I'm not really surprised about that. Uh, and then we have a little bit of a pocket here, uh, probably something where there was a hole in the middle of the wood where the resin couldn't get to. So I'm just gonna fill those little holes with some more resin, uh, a couple little pits here and there, uh, fill all those up and then we'll just sand it down and polish it up. All right, we got our workpiece sanded on all edges at this point. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a router and, and just put a little uh, round over on each edge, just to make sure there's no kind of sharp edges on this. Uh, and then at that point, we're just about ready to finish this up, but it's starting to look pretty good. So let me wipe this off and I'll get you guys a shot of this so you can kind of see what we're working with.
All right, we got this thing sanded up. It's starting to look pretty sweet and starting to get kind of, you know, transparent. You can kind of see through it. Uh, looking pretty awesome. So now we have some decisions to make. I didn't stabilize this wood. I just tossed it in there and went with it. So uh, at some point you need to kind of, you know, stabilize or, or, or seal off the wood uh, somehow. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just hit it with some lacquer. I'm just going to seal coat it. Uh, we'll just spray lacquer it and it'll be pretty much ready. Uh, the last step that I want to do is put a couple, well, four <laughs> feet on the bottom. I need to go and find some of those things. But there's just some uh, either screw in or just even adhesive ones that'll just kind of give it uh, some feet to sit on. So let's head over to the little spray booth that I use to spray lacquers and stuff. Um, I'm thinking that we'll put about five coats or so on. Uh, so we'll just kind of do that quick. We'll speed it up and uh, we'll see how this thing looks after we get that finish on. Well, all right, guys, we got our five coats of lacquer on this, and it is looking pretty sweet. That wood is amazing in this, so thanks again to Robin for sending that out. It just added a lot of interest to this piece, and all of the little effects that we added, the color shift powder and the pearls, are really just adding so much interest. The little fluffy kind of clouds of stuff, and the, the, the color shift is just shifting around on you. Pretty cool project. I'm happy with it. Now, I know that I said that I'm not going to be using this as a cutting board. Uh, I'm just not, I'm unsure. I didn't use any food safe resins or any of that stuff, and I'm not sure about it anyway. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to be using it as a cutting board, but I got to be honest, after getting this finished and looking at it, even if it was the most safe resin on the planet, everything was going to be good, I probably wouldn't be cutting on this. I mean, and I can't imagine if I was selling this to someone or giving it to someone, they probably wouldn't either. In three months, I mean, you would just tear this thing up and it would you'd need to resurface it all the time. So I, I don't know. I think these are more decorative. I think they're better off being more of a decorative piece anyway. Um, now that there's lacquer on it, uh, once that fully cures, it's, it's inert. I mean, most of your top coat finishes, once they are fully cured, they're inert anyway. So I really wouldn't feel bad using this as a charcuterie board or something like that, where it's like, you know, not juicy foods, you know, some, I'm not cutting tomatoes on it and juices are, are mixing in, but things, you know, put, put, put a bunch of crackers and cheeses and meats on this. I don't think that there would be any problem with that. Um, another thing you could do with something like this and to avoid the food contact issue is just make it like a serving tray where, you know, you're putting plates of things. I, I would probably go with something bigger size, but, you know, put some handles on it and you can put plates of, you know, whatever kind of foods on it and serve that way. So just a couple other thoughts about this. Frankly, I mean, you could just hang this on the wall, um, you know, call it wall art. You could even frame it and it would be pretty cool. So it was a really fun project to make. A uh, couple little thoughts about this or well, one note, um, my random orbit sander left a bunch of swirl marks and I really thought the lacquer was going to make it disappear and it didn't. So there's, there's some swirl marks that I'm not very happy with, but they're kind of hard to see unless you're really looking for it. But I just want to warn you guys, um, random orbit sanders are kind of known for doing this. And I tried everything I could. I, you know, I've, I've read about it and, and some of the things that people say is, you know, don't press too hard when you're holding the sander. Don't move it too fast and, and turn the speed down. I did all of those things. The one thing I didn't do was use water the whole way, wet sand it, but the wood wasn't stabilized or treated in any way. So I didn't really want it absorbing a bunch of moisture. So that's something, I, I think one thing that I could have done is maybe finished with a uh, hand sanding and just done it, you know, back and forth that might have got rid of it before i put the lacquer on just wanted to mention that though it, it did happen um i also have one other thing i was going to add feet to this and i thought that i had these things in the shop i can't find them and i don't have time to get them and i, I want to get this video up um i'm just going to use the stick on feet and that way it'll kind of sit on the counter kind of nice um, again i think that we'll probably put this on our counter and just kind of make it you know maybe put other things on top of it uh, or like I said, I think you could use this as a charcuterie board without any problems. I would probably say, let it sit for like a good month. Uh, you, then you're pretty much guaranteed that that lacquer is totally, you know, cured up. 
then I think you could put this into, you know, minor food contact. I don't think you'd have a problem with it. Uh, but one other thought that I had going through this whole project, you know, if you're somebody that wants to get into resin river tables or, you know, you just want to make one. And, and let's say for the person that has never really worked with resin before, but you want to make a table. Problem is that's a pretty big project. You know, that's a lot of resin and it's, it's going to be some bigger pieces of wood. This is a pretty good project for like somebody that's never really done anything to kind of get your feet wet uh, you know, and, and and just get an idea of what's involved for something bigger. I mean, this is exactly the same type of thing as, as those resin river type tables. Um, it's just a little bit smaller. So I just thought that might be something that, you know, if you're thinking about getting into it, uh, you know, or making a table like that or something bigger, uh, maybe just go for like a smaller kind of cutting board, you know, charcuterie board first, just to kind of see how everything works. I'd say the biggest differences between the two projects, uh, things that you're not going to learn from doing something smaller, is mainly just the sheer size you know there's going to be a lot more resin that you got to mix up and you're probably just going to use a mixer with a drill that'll be different than what you would probably do for this you could just mix it by hand the other thing is you know you got you're going to have a lot larger pieces of wood that you're going to have to deal with in a bigger uh, mold but other than that everything is pretty much the same so i just wanted to kind of mention that i thought of that going through this like this is probably what a, a table would be like so Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the project. Uh, I had a blast making it. One other thing that I wanted to mention that I kind of also noticed while I was doing this project, it took a little bit more time than, than like turning blanks, which I usually do. Those, you know, you can demold them, wait a few days and then pop them on the lathe. And, you know, within a couple days, you're done pretty much with it. This had a lot more steps. So it just, it takes a little bit longer than, than turning projects. So just kind of wanted to mention that also. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if this is your first time on my channel, we do all kinds of resin casting projects, tips and tricks, and experiments around here. So if you're interested in that, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get notified when new videos get posted. And if you're thinking about getting into resin casting, but you're not really sure where to begin, check out my ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Resin Casting. It answers all those beginner questions like, what, what resin should I use? What tools and supplies do I need? It'll help you get over that initial learning curve so you can get in the shop and start doing some resin casting projects of your own. So it's available on my website if you're interested. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.